Now, I know that many of you out there have FSLogix container-based deployments, right? Either for full profiles or for parts of the profiles. However, the big issue that we've always had with container-based solutions like FSLogix is that when they create the VHDs or VHDXs that are used for this, is that they expand dynamically, right? But they don't compact dynamically, which can cause you a few issues. So imagine if a user is logged on with a profile container and drops out, say, 10 gigabytes of files into the profile. And then at a later date, they delete those 10 gigabytes of files out of the profile. You're left with 10, gigabyte, 10 gigabytes of white space within that container. Now, FSLogix is clever enough to use the white space first, right? So it won't become dramatically inefficient in terms of storage. But it still means that you're potentially provisioning and or even paying for space that is essentially empty. Now, for a very long time, we've had third-party scripts to handle this. But now, as of version 22.10 and higher, this compaction is now built into the product. And we're going to record this video here to show you how to turn on the FSLogix compaction for your container-based deployments. Now, the most important thing to do is to make sure that you have got FSLogix installed onto the endpoints that you are going to enable disk compaction on. Obviously, it needs to be done with the very latest version, right? It takes advantage of all the latest and fixes. So get the latest possible version. You can deploy it anywhere you want, through Config Manager, through a script, through any kind of software deployment tool, or even like we're doing here, just install it manually onto the endpoint. Make sure it's installed before we start setting this up. Next thing that you need to do is simply copy out of the program installation folders the ADMX and ADMO files in your group policy, simple store or domain store. So you put the ADMX file into the folder store root, you put the ADML file into the language specific subfolder as well. So make sure you've got that done to take advantage of the new settings that are available. Next, what you need to do is actually edit the group policy object that contains your FS logic settings, right? So open up the group policy object that you have, go to policies, admin templates, down into FS logics, and look in the very root of the FS logics folder and find disk compaction, as I said here, set it to enabled and also tick the box. Click on OK and then it's done. You now just need that to sync out to all your machines and it will be there. Now, next thing we're going to show is a demonstration of this in action. So first, I'm going to log on to my Citrix workspace and launch a Windows 10 virtual desktop that's using FSLogix. It's already using FSLogix for full profile container management. So the profile is going to be loaded from the VHDX file during the logon here, which should be quite sharp because container-based logons are normally quite good, as you can see there. So we're now logged on to our desktop, right? And the first thing that we're going to aim to do is to show you the current size of the profile that's in there. So I'll browse to the file store, which we've got here, where my profile VHD is stored. And you should say it's down as JRAP underscore 10, because it's Windows 10. And the user profile at the minute is around 170 megabytes. In size, so very, very small, right? We haven't done much in that user profile at all. But now, what we're going to do is we're going to expand it and show you how it dynamically expands, right? So, let's copy some big files in there, grab some setup files from inside the same file share, and I'll copy those to the user's desktop, right? So, once this file copy has completed, you should be able to see that the user profile has been expanded by the size of the files that we've copied in there, which you obviously very much expect to be the case. So once those are fully copied over, just have a quick look now at the size of the profile container. It's now 1.6, nearly 1.7 gigabytes. So it's increased quite dramatically by about one and a half gigabytes. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do after that is actually just delete the files that we've just put down there, right? So we'll get rid of those files that have just expanded our profile quite dramatically. And once those are gone, you should then see that the profile hasn't automatically compacted itself. It hasn't decreased in size. It's still using all of that white space there, right? 
So that's all being used up now and if we were paying for it by the gigabyte it would be completely wasted space. So let's just get logged off from this machine. Because we've got this new setting applied though, right? This new setting that says when logged out, if certain parameters are met, and we'll discuss those more in a second. If these parameters are met, then what it is going to do it is basically going to automatically compact that file for us, right? Down to you know as far into the white space as it can possibly get. So if we just bring across here a connection to my domain controller, now you can still see that that the profile folder is still showing as 1.6, 1.7 gigabytes, but this should be in the process now of doing the compaction. So hopefully we should see that drop down to a much smaller size just as soon as it finishes the compaction routine. And there you go, you just saw it happen there in real, real time. It's now back down to the size that it initially was. So we have saved all of that space that we wasted essentially in that container. It's now all being reclaimed as the user's logged out and it's all well and good and back to an optimal state. So just a few notes around this, right? Firstly, how does FS Logix determine when to run the compaction? Well, obviously the first thing it depends on is whether the policy is set, right? But once the policy is set, it looks at the size of the user's container, right? So the container has to be over one gigabyte in size, otherwise it won't run at all. And that's committed space, so that's used space and white space together, has to be over one gigabyte in size. The other thing it considers is the difference between the committed size, which is the current size of the container, including white space, and the minimum size, which is the actual size of the total files in the container, not including white space. So the actual fully committed size of the container must be greater than or equal to 20% of the committed size, right? So that's the parameters that it looks at in order to decide whether it should do compaction or not. Troubleshooting wise, there's Probably not a lot of troubleshooting you'd need to do. Obviously, you need to make sure the parameters are being met, you need to make sure that FS Logix is installed, that the policy is set, and things like that. One thing I can mention is have a look at the optimized drives service, right? If that is disabled on your endpoints, then it won't be able to do the compaction. It uses the optimized drive service to do the actual compaction. So if you find that it's not running as expected, then that's maybe something that you want to do. All in all, as for FS Logix Compaction, that just about covers it. It's a neat feature, one that we've had to kind of shoehorn our, in ourselves previously in the past, but now is available natively within the software, and hopefully you can now use it to reclaim lots of space.